redzonesports.bet, the British home of American sports. Hello and welcome to the Sports Heads, the NFL show for UK fans, which you can find every week on YouTube. In association with Red Zone Sports, we're bringing you the news, the views and the game analysis ahead of all the weekend's action. We're looking at week 12 this week and we're coming to the final stretch of the NFL season. We're going to take a look at some of the big games this week. The first one is probably not one of the biggest games, but it's certainly crucial in the AFC East. It's the New England Patriots hosting the sad sack Miami Dolphins. That's a tropical point. Tropical point. Would be if they were playing yeah. in Miami. Uh, sad sack is pretty much the word for it. You've, you've described have, it. You've described yeah. it uh, almost perfectly. Dolphins Miami, have lost four Miami's in a row. In a, they've lost four in a row. They're in a mm. tailspin. New England's on a roll, uh, playing some very good football. They've One had six. a lot of injury losses, mm. and they've been able to to cope with that. And uh, for Miami, the big point is that Matt Moore is going to be at quarterback. Jay Cutler's um, suffering from a concussion. He's in the concussion protocol. Mm -hmm. And we know what Matt Moore can and can't do. And, you know, he's kind of a fireman. And, mm -hmm. and you don't really want him as your starter. I don't think New England's going to worry about Matt Moore beating him. So now you're going to look for who is going to beat you. And that makes it easier to mm -hmm. stop Miami's offense. Interesting, though, you look at uh, Miami's uh, issues. Really, for me, it's an identity problem. They've had two seasons, or season and a half now in Adam Gase's system. They're still trying to find an identity. Hmm. What's, this, what's the problem with this? Well, I wonder if Brian Tannehill hadn't been hurt, if they might have a little bit more offensive identity, hmm. bringing Jay Cutler in as the starter, because he'd worked with Gaze in Chicago, seemed to make sense. But Cutler never really fitted even the offense that he ran pretty well in hmm. Chicago, it's strangely enough. It's a, it's a kind of heavy play action, mm. lots of short passes kind of thing. And they let Jay Ajay go. The play action doesn't really have a whole lot now behind mm -hmm. it. So, so you just wonder what they're thinking. And for me, Gaze has this proclivity of doing something I never like to see coaches do, but blame the players. Mm. You know, tossing the players under the bus, you might call it. When so, no, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you know, you know that. I was just going to say, you, you know about that. Yeah, and, and it's interesting you talk about that because when you ask about what is their identity? Mm -hmm. Well, their identity from what we see is a mirror image of what the culture that we don't see is. And I think when, when the head coach is you know, throwing players under the bus, and that's, that, that's an indication of what kind of culture there is in the locker room, in the meeting rooms, and you know, mm -hmm. in the facility. And, and, and that can be a tough one. I'll, I'll go back to my days with the Philadelphia Eagles, and it's interesting, and you, you have to respect it, but you've never heard Andy Reid blame a player. And it was almost reporters in Philadelphia would get upset because he would never say anything <laughs> negative. And the most negative thing he would say would be something along the lines of, we need to coach better. We need to explain something better. We needed to recognize something better. Even when that was completely not the case because Andy Reid was one of the most methodical coaches out there. And obviously based on his success, we know, you know what kind of coach he is. So when you ask about what their identity is, I, I think we're, we're seeing it. Mm. And, and identity isn't just what you do on the football field. It's, it's in the process to getting to that football field. Right. That, that, that Monday through Saturday, that off season, you know, that cultural dynamic that becomes the most important thing to any organization's success. You want to contrast? Look at what happened after the Patriots game in Mexico City against Oakland mm -hmm. last Sunday. Belichick moved into third place, all-time wins by a coach. Yeah. Kraft came into the locker room, the owner of the team, gave him the game ball. You know, said that Belichick turned around and said, this is for you guys. Mm -hmm. said, you, we, you know, yeah. we won this as a team. Yeah. You know, it is a team culture. Mm -hmm. It is a team culture. Mm -hmm. I want to, looking from Miami, obviously we've got Jay Cutler, 36 years old. Matt Moore is actually 36 years old as well. I just wonder whether it's time to have a look at David Fales. I mean, he played really well in, in preseason, and I think... And he's another guy who came know, from Chicago. He may with, not be the answer, Gaze. but then, you know, Cutler I, it's and It's a great Cutler point. It's a great solution. point, because you know what you're going to get and not get from Matt Moore. Now, mm. the argument against it is that they're, they're um, what, four and six, mm. but they're still in that playoff hunt. Yeah. This is what was so crazy about Buffalo, the team ahead of them at five and five mm. last week, starting a fifth round draft rookie yeah. with no experience when, when their quarterback had, you know, had a bad, one bad game, yeah. their veteran Tyrod Taylor. You know, and, and again, if I were Buffalo's coach, if I'm Sean McDermott, I'd just come in and say, that was my bad. 
You know, we put mm -hmm. we put Nate in a situation yeah. where he wasn't yeah. ready for. <laughs> we should have coached him up better. Mm -hmm. We'll move past it. Tyrod is back as the starting. It shouldn't be even a, a question, you know, yeah. as to how they go forward. With the Dolphins, I don't think you can go to fails at this point, right. simply because you're still in the playoffs, mm -hmm. and, and the message it'll be the message will be interpreted as as we're sort of we're going to tank. Waving the white flag. Yeah. Yeah. And to that point, it's interesting. I, I have to agree with you on that one because there's there's two sides, and you kind of alluded to it. But they may, it may be more important for Miami to have a game manager than risk someone who might be able to make something happen. Mm -hmm. and, and we can believe and trust that he potentially could make something happen, but he may not be in the right place to really bet on that. That's a good point. Yeah, because Fails is by nature or by, by, by uh, accoutrements, his physical abilities, a game manager. That's the kind of quarterback he would mm -hmm. be. But you don't know that. Because he hasn't had that experience. See, what, so what word was that you just used? Accoutrement. Accoutrement. See, throws a good see, we're, we're, see I, think that's, I think that's a good we're, thing. We're educated on this show. We're educated. I love it. That's that little three education. Oh, yeah. Is that Wesley? <laughs> yeah, that's that Wesley. Wesley I love it. I love I'll it. I'll say one thing for Fels. He does throw a good deep ball. That's mm -hmm. one thing we don't, you know, we may not have seen. We've seen a little bit of it in preseason. Um, hmm. Looking at the Patriots, we've looked at the Dolphins a little bit. The Patriots, um, they've won six in a row. Their schedule at the start of the year looked pretty tough, but actually it's, gone, it's been it's gotten really easier. It's got it? a lot easier. Yeah. I mean, they, they play four teams that boast a winning record, and they've lost two of them. Um, I just wonder whether or not you look at it. Their last the defensively, their last in yards conceded. They are last in passing yards, twenty um, fourth in rushing defense. They're there to be exploited. It, it, the question is who exploits them? is who exploits them, and what they do best is play situational defense. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is what you saw in the Super Bowl. They've got a lot better Atlanta than gained a week. whole lot of yardage yeah. against them in that Super Bowl, but Atlanta was one for eight mm -hmm. on third down, and that was a penalty. They didn't convert a single third down. Mm -hmm. And when it came to situational football in the four, fourth quarter, the Patriots were always a guess ahead of them. Mm -hmm. Atlanta would get a good play, Patriots would come up with a stop, then put them into a, a second and long. They, the Patriots would guess what's coming and guess right. And they're very good at doing that. Mm. They've gotten better because they've had to overcome losses, uh, player losses, especially Dante. Dante I was going to say, how, how big a, you know, we, at the start loss. of the year, we lost him for a couple of games. They looked very, very shaky. It was yeah. more communication than anything else from what I saw. Um, they've lost him now. They've only had a couple of games without him. They've not really had to worry he, in those He's a great games, player and, and very under, under recognized because at the beginning of the year, they tried playing him on the outside because they don't have a pass rusher. Mm. They don't have a guy who's a natural pass rusher. So they tried him on the outside. But what happened was he aligns the team. He's that real inside linebacker thing where he knows what everybody on the team is doing. So the defense is better when mm. he's at that position. And he is a great inside linebacker as well. But they mm. needed him there. Kyle Van Noy has wound up being the guy now who's stepped into that role. Yeah. And he's getting better at it mm -hmm. as, as the weeks go on. And, and because he's in there and he's a three-down linebacker, that means the other guys they've got, they can use in those other positions, get more rotation through. And it helps them mm. in two ways. Oh, the, la sorry, six. the last thing the NFL wants to see is a terrible Patriot defense getting better and better <laughs> playing situational defense it's because true, that offense and that team mm. you almost have to think about it they they play well enough to win and they play up to whatever their competition is but at the end of the day they come in with so much confidence and bravado mm. that them being hot I don't care how many teams under 500 they've already beaten. Mm. The last thing you need is a team having that much more confidence going into this part of the year because that team right there, if they get hot at the right time, yeah. And sometimes being hot isn't about necessarily how good of a team you actually are, but how confident you are in what you do right. better than the other person and how confident you are in making adjustments if you decide you're going to beat up on us in the first half, i.e. the Super Bowl. You can almost look at the Patriots like Muhammad Ali. You know, they come in there and they'll just let you hit them, let you hit them, <laughs> they slip you, they slip you, you know, and then all of a sudden, bam! Yeah. So... The Patriots, I, I mean, like, look, th this game, Miami, you know, can they possibly come out with a win? 
No. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I'm but, an eternal you know, optimist. Think, but when you look at the casualty. Patriot team, I think no, I just think <laughs> I just think from a philosophical standpoint, you know, what they've been able to build, we could talk about the cows come home. But when you talk about this season in particular and where they are and the teams they have to play in order to get into the playoffs and then do what they do best at the time of the year where they do it better than anybody yeah. else. Oh, yeah, they've they figured got, things out. They've only got one team to play with a record above 500, and that's Pittsburgh at the moment. So, you know, Which they, is a big one. because It is a big one that because could that well could be, be home field advantage. Yeah, yeah, it could be, the, yeah. it could be a, a prelude to that, certainly. Um, one thing for me on the Patriots, uh, as the improvement has gone on, has is, is, uh, been the play of Nate Solder. I think that's a real key for them. And well, also, what does Martellus Bennett bring? It's you know, it's Solder's important because so right now they were down to their third right tackle. Mm. Um, not that you would have noticed, because they, they do a great job yeah. of just getting enough out of these guys. They had a backup center, and yeah. um, David Andrews missed his first ever game. Yeah. Ted Karras was, was in at center. Um, Solder has to hold up at that left tackle mm. spot, and he, do, and he does a pretty good job. Mm. He's a lot like, um, the guy he reminds me the most of is a guy called Matt Lepsis, who played for the um, Broncos for a long time. Yeah. He's got that same kind of X tight end build. Not like Jason Peters, who got bigger this yeah. way, but He's but just but so and he relies a lot on, on quickness, on mm. foot quickness, um, to to get his blocks, and a little bit like Matt Light as well, who was his predecessor at mm. left tackle. Again, not an overwhelming guy, but a guy who solid would get into position yeah. and, and be solid. Bennett, what Bennett's addition means is that they can, if they're having problems, if they're facing a strong pass rush team, they can go with two tight ends with mm. Gronk and with Bennett both of whom who can block a defensive end man on man mm. without, a, without a problem. Both of whom, if they're lined up as a flanker, can chip a guy and get, still get out and catch balls. And then, of course, they've got Dwayne Allen, who does the, who's another good blocking tight end. Mm. And then the fourth guy, Hollister, is a pass catcher. They can come at you now with, the, with exactly what they want, is a formation with two tight ends or three tight ends or two running backs, and you don't know where they're going to line up. And you know, one of those running backs winds up, lines up at wide receiver. They'll put their fullback at wide receiver. Can mm -hmm. you imagine Cecil out there split 15 yards with the Eagles? With the and neck roll and everything. <laughs> there you go. And, and guess what? The Miami Dolphins perennially terrible at defending tight ends, and they've been exactly the same this season. Yeah. yeah, and you know, the Dolphins, this is, we talk about the offense all the time, but mm -hmm. Miami spent big money to build a great defensive front. Yes. And does anyone worry about their defensive front, mm -hmm. really? Do, do, do teams appear to scheme no. to avoid the defensive front? No. Not at all. No, exactly. They need, they need a special offensive line. I mean, they've got to look in the draft. I'm, I'm thinking some, someone like Brandon, Brandon Allen at, um, at Auburn or Frank Raglow at Arkansas. They really need a couple of guys in there. Some good, young, big lads yeah. that are going to do the business. So we'll see what happens in the draft. But Somebody who doesn't put a on. gas mask on and, and a bomb exactly. when they go oh. for the draft. <laughs> <laughs> right, the, oh. next, uh, the next game we're going to look at, Jax. <laughs> We, we obviously think that New England are going to win this. They're 16 point favourites. I think they're going to cover That's it a big test. spread. It is a big yeah, spread, but, but this is Miami we're yeah. talking about. Um, next game we're going to take a look at is the New Orleans Saints against the LA Rams. This is going to be a massive game. Um, playoff implications all over the place. The, uh, the Saints are 8 and 2, they've won yeah. their last 8. Uh, the Rams are 7 and 3, leading the NFC West. Uh, they've got a few issues at uh, cornerback. They're down to their third-string uh, cornerbacks, the Rams. Yeah, so and that's, that's what issue. hurt them against Minnesota more, more than almost anything else because yeah. um, that game was pretty even coming, mm. at, coming out of halftime. In fact, the was Rams could have easily had the lead at halftime in yeah. that game. Um, and they were, I, tight against, they were tight against Minnesota. They were 7-7 seven, 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 yeah, uh, seven, uh, seven uh, uh, in the fourth quarter. And um, the, the Saints were, I wouldn't say lucky to win that game, they but came 15 points down. But they, yeah, they, the they had to come back, um, you know, and, and they got an amazing performance from Drew Brees yeah, on Washington. those last two yeah. drives and, and in, in the overtime. Yeah. And, I, and I think basically what happened was, you know, they had worn out. <laughs> mm. They'd worn out the opposition, basically. Um, so I, I find this one really interesting. And the Saints are, they're going to be playing Wade Phillips in a 3-4 in defense, which... Mm they're pretty well adapted to working against, especially if they can run the ball. And that's been the big thing with them this year, is an offensive line that's played pretty well. They didn't play as well as they had against the Rams, um, you know, version of, of that defense. Mm. But they, um, 
they have opened the holes for the running game yeah. for Ingram and Kamara. And it, Sean Payton has proven very good at getting the best out of two of both of those yeah. guys, both of whom can catch passes. They well. also love to run to that right side as well, but even, th even though they've lost the likes of Zach Streif early on, they still tend to run to that right side. It's a big strength on that line. A couple of key injuries as well for the Saints, which is, is more troubling. Uh, defensive end Alex Okifor has done Achilles problem uh, out for the season. That's massive. That's because massive because that's their big part of their pass yeah, and rush. And they've also lost their top cornerback, who's a rookie this year, Marshawn. Uh, and Lowe. that's huge that's too, because that's that's a huge part of their defensive improvement. Remember, they were terrible on defense for like three, mm. four years in a row. When they brought in Mike Nolan as the linebackers coach, he's another main crush of mine. Mike Nolan's a brilliant. Mike Nolan's brilliant good, man. good defensive coach. No, yeah. no question about it. But Lattimore is a shutdown corner. Mm. I mean, I. He, he stepped right in as a rookie mm. and it has played well above that. I thought he, he and um, Ladarius Smith in yeah. Buffalo, I mean, yeah. like two standout cornerbacks uh, exactly. playing like veterans. Um, also, interestingly, for a couple of injuries on the Rams as well, Robert Woods, the wide receiver, was in a sling after the uh, game at the weekend against the Vikings. Um, Cooper Cups also had a couple of key drops as well. Um, and uh, like I said, they're very, very thin at cornerback, and they've also got no consistent pass rush. So there's, there's two teams that I think, personally, two division leaders that may well be very overrated. I don't know what you think, Cease. I mean, the big thing for me when I look at this game is, you know, you have a New Orleans Saints rushing attack that's third in the NFL mm -hmm. going against uh, Los Angeles Rams rush defense ranked 28th. Yeah. Now, we already know the New Orleans Saints love to pound the ball with Ingram. But we also know that they love throwing that ball down the field from Drew Brees. Mm. And they are ranked first in the NFL in total yards. So wh when you look at this game and you look at the matchup between both of these teams, mm. you know, for me, are they potentially overrated? Let's just say yes. If you say no, it's mm. worth the debate. But both the, this game for both of these teams is a test. Mm. Who are we really? Right. And, and I'm looking at and, and both of them are looking at each other and saying, oh, your record is good. Well, your record is good, too. Well, you know what? Who's the better team? Right. Yeah. Like like whose record is legit and whose well, isn't. The Ram so I mean, the Rams have played, what, three teams with a winning record and they've, they've they're one and two against them. And uh, admittedly, it was the losses came against Seattle, which they could have won. Yeah. And, and Philadelphia, which. Uh, yeah. And, well, and you know, last Philadelphia, week, so. what last week, what you saw was to get pass rush against the skins. New Orleans was basically blitzing. A mm -hmm. lot of blitzing, and Cousins yeah. is very good. Cousins is one against of the best the in the league. He'll stand up against the blitz and just put the ball up there where he sees that one-on-one -on -one matchup. And you yeah. know he's been very good at that mm. in the last couple of weeks. He's he's saved their their skin. Uh, mm -hmm. No pun intended. <laughs> but um, you know, but when they came out in overtime, having given up that last touchdown and two-point conversion, they looked flat. The yeah. first they ran three plays in overtime. It was drop sack, yep. drop, yep. and the game was over, basically. Yeah. I, I caution, you know, viewers and, and, and lovers of, of NFL football from calling any team potentially overrated in the NFL because it's so hard That's to fair. win football games in That's the NFL. Fair. It's easy to do, though, especially, you know what I mean? And, and we all fall into it. Head, yeah, yeah and I do it, yeah. yeah. And, and, and I do it, too, you know? But it's, but it's interesting when, when you ask the question because... Not only is it hard to win football games, but, you know, games are won by an average of less than a touchdown. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it becomes real interesting. That's why head-to-head -head matchups of teams that have had success mm -hmm. is so key because I go back to that mentality of confidence, you know. And when you have rankings that are so, like, I mean, all over the place, you almost feel like, oh, I already know who's going to win this yeah, game, and they're yeah. going to win by X amount of points. And the beautiful thing about the NFL is that every week, crazy things happen, mm -hmm. and, and that's why we love it. Giants beat the Chiefs. Exactly. And who have we got? Who have we got, Mike, in this game? In this game? Phew. Cease. That's well, he's thinking one. about it. Uh, you think about that <laughs> one. Good. I you mean, would have thought, thought I had this all figured <laughs> out. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably going to take, take the Rams. Yep. Okay. Oh. The Rams, have, the Rams have won three of the last four against yeah, them. I'm going to check the, the injury situation. Yeah, but, it is but, a case of see who's but, in, see who's yeah, out. But, but I'm probably going to take the Rams. I worry about the yeah. cornerback situation, but there again, you know, I don't see whether the Saints are going to get their pass rush on without Oki for It's a big big adjustment for them. Mm, yeah, Cease. well, I, I see Drew Brees just continuing that number one 415-yard average. I see mm. the running game just beasting them up. 
-hmm. And uh, I go back to my man Breeze because he is a Purdue grad in the Big Ten, always showing love to my conference. Rams make a statement for me. Anyway, let's move on. Oh! Yeah, Rams make yeah. a statement. Let's go on to the third game we're going to have a look at. The Green Bay Packers at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, start of the season, this was one of the key games yeah. to watch. But uh, without Brett Favre, uh, Brett Favre, without Brett Favre, without Brett Favre with Brett Huntley. With Brett, Brett Huntley. Huntley's the that's second Brett best Brett to ever play quarterback in the <laughs> Ah, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> You've been waiting to <laughs> use that all week, haven't yeah, you? Yeah. Did yeah, we get right. it first? Without, we got it first for anyone else? Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Aaron Rodgers, for Rodgers, slip. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers, it's uh, in the yeah. broken collar. No, this it's is, it's a mean, different game completely. Yeah, I, and, you know, it compounds things that Green Bay doesn't have. You know, who's their running back this week? Who knows? Yeah. You know, the injury situation is so bad. Um, their defense is... They lost Clay Matthews at the mm -hmm. beginning of the game in, in, in uh, la last week, but they already have defensive backs out, linemen out. Um, I don't know what it is in Green Bay that bring, you know, why the players are so brittle there, but they have been for the mm -hmm. last two, three years. And um, one theory is that a lot of the guys just aren't as good as they might be and are trying too hard. But you know, especially mm -hmm. on the O on the O line, they they it's very strange the way they build the team. They, they build it almost exclusively through the draft mm. and through signing undrafted, mm -hmm. undrafted guys. And, and at times you do have to supplement that, you know, with, even with its, if it's street level guys, but they, yeah. let, they let Lang walk, they let Sitton walk, they yeah. went their offensive line. You know, the tackles are good. Well, yeah. Balaga and um, Bakhtari are good tackles, yeah. but they're both they're injury yeah. prone. Yeah. Um, and so you need that, that bit of continuity. So I don't really see many positives here and, and mm. looking at Brett Huntley who when he was at UCLA played most of his career under extreme pressure they weren't mm. very good and he spent a lot of time running and dodging from from um, the pass rush and, and throwing which is what he's doing which is what he's doing now yeah, exactly <laughs> he's had a lot of experience but when you look at how Green Bay's offense functions it's still even with him at quarterback is still basically sending four guys out one-on-one -on -one mm. and waiting for one of them to get open. They do not do a lot of scheming to get guys open. You don't see a, a whole lot of, of that kind of work. Um, you don't see enough, I think, of guys out of the backfield, which I would love, especially when you have like Randall Cobb lining up at running mm. back or Ty Montgomery lining up at running, at running back. So I, I just think they need to be more creative and they're not going to be. And Pittsburgh have this unfortunate habit of playing down to the level of the team yes, that they're true. playing, which this is my true. only hesitation <laughs> in this one. The interesting thing from my point of view is uh, the fact that I'm going to bring him up regardless, Colin Kaepernick. Now they've sat there with Brett Hundley, so he's been in the system three years, he knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, but the, the production is dreadful, um, whether that's offensive line or anything else. They've still got the set of wide receivers, it's fine. But you, I personally want an experienced backup, and they had the opportunity to bring him in. Yeah. And didn't well, you know it. who their backup is. I was watching them warm up last week, and, and you see mm. his name on the back. It's Callahan. Mm. I mean, Bo Callahan <laughs> is, in the, is in the NFL, the oh, guy from draft day. It's, wow. it's, it's the quarterback they were all it's after. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Kevin Costner. You know what's, what's yeah, interesting? Kevin Costner could be Kevin the GM. Ah, oh, you know, the, the interesting thing about uh, <laughs> Colin Kaepernick, um, when they had a chance to get him, was that before or after Colin Kaepernick um, filed his suit against the NFL? That was before. It was, it was before. Yeah. Okay. They had the opportunity but to do that. But his agent came out, yeah, around that time. So but, a little but, bit after that, his agent came out and said, you know, he expected him to get signed to the next week and a half, and the suit would go away. But but here's the but the other question though is is when did Brett Favre get hurt? Did he get hurt after he filed the suit or before he filed the suit? Before. before. Oh, he did. Okay, so yeah. it all happened beforehand. Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Steelers. We knew who you meant. <laughs> 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 Steelers have been winning ugly, but they yeah. need to improve their red zone efficiency. Well, That's pretty the problem with the Steelers. I, well, the problem with the Steelers is also the strength of the Steelers. Mm. They're a big play team with big play players. They got guys, you know what coaches always say, go out and make a play. Go out mm. and they got guys who can go out and make yeah. a play. So they don't really, they don't need to scheme as much as, as most teams do mm -hmm. because Ben will sit back there, yeah. he'll make an extra second for himself and then he'll find Ju Juju, Juju, mm -hmm. Juju Smith, Juju Smith what, a, what an addition that is. <laughs> he, he fits them perfectly. Mm -hmm. Antonio Brown who yeah. is pound for pound the best receiver in the league, mm -hmm. um, without a question. Mm -hmm. Martavis Bryant, who has a little bit of, should be motivated right yeah. now to play his butt off for those guys. And Le'Veon Bell, mm -hmm. who can, you know, run him 30 times and throw 10 passes mm -hmm. to him if that's what you got to do. And because they're a big 
big play team, their third down mm. efficiency is not great. Uh, you know, that, that's something they need to, yeah. the third down offense needs to improve on. Their tackling needs to improve as well, because that's been a bit of a weakness for them. Um, and I just saw Gilbert is suspended, their tackle, yes, that's right, um, yeah. for a, a PED violation. Yes, that's not going to help them. I think one, one star that stands out for Pittsburgh for me has been Cameron Haywood. Um, bearing in mind they, they play a 3-4, and uh, the linebackers tend to get most of the sacks. Uh, he's been an absolute monster. Yeah. And well, and, and I like J Javon Hargreaves in the middle too because mm. I think he's he's got nose yeah. tackle plus, um, mm. and it was Casey Hayward. I think it was the last yes. great great nose tackle yes. they had. Exactly. He's got a lot of those kind of characteristics. Yeah. But if you can get anything from your front three in a three four, then it's mm. a big plus, which is why Bruce Smith was such a great defensive end because he could play as if he were a four three end mm. in a three four defense. Um, they're much more aggressive than they were in the in the Dick. The bow days. Yeah. Um, That's fair. And um, I think better now in the back end as, as a result. Um, mm. You know, Troy Polamalu was a great player, but for those last couple of years, they were depending on him to be mm, everywhere. Too much. He was, you know, he'd been beaten up over yeah. the years. He couldn't get yeah. everywhere. He was guessing more yeah. often than not. Exactly. Well, I could tell you this about the Pittsburgh Steelers, and, and look for Mike Tomlin to really be harping on, on something this week that's going to play to a disadvantage to the Green Bay Packers. And that's, you're right, they've been playing down to the teams they play, mm -hmm. and they win kind of ugly, and they, yeah. they don't win at the level they should. You know, when I was in the NFL, you know, there were times when we would start slow, and, mm -hmm. and then the mantra became, start fast, start fast. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, he I mean, look for Tomlin to come out with some quick throws right away and then take some shots. Yeah. Look for him to say we need to get used to starting fast and putting our foot on a team's neck mm -hmm. right away and not just easing through and allowing our big playability to end us, you know, with yeah. the win, because he knows the closer you get to the playoffs, the, the more important the games are. And if you do get to the playoffs, if you're starting slow, well, you have a chance of ending your entire season at that point. Yeah. So he wants them to begin practicing starting fast. Yeah, teams, people talk about fourth quarter comebacks. Yeah. Yeah. I want a quarterback who's going to give me a second quarter lead mm, so exactly. I can set my pass rush open. Mm. Now I know they're going to have to throw. Mm. We're going to come at We're going to come at you. It makes mm. life so much easier. As a Dolphins fan, I hear you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a first half team. Um, the Green Bay Packers have lost the last four trips to Pittsburgh. I think we're all in, can, you know, yeah. uh, agree yeah. that yeah. Pittsburgh are going to win this game. Yeah. Going quickly back to Green Bay, their next two games after this are against the Browns and the Bucks. Now they're two very, very winnable games. They're five and five at the moment. Do they miss the playoffs? Yes. Sees? Yes. I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer. Look at the numbers. I mean, even if Aaron Rodgers comes back in Week 15, I don't think he comes back in Week 15. Nor do I. First off, I mean, even if he's <laughs> even if he's healed, I don't think he's ready to come back, and I probably wouldn't want him to come back. But you know, they're they're in a division with the Vikings and the Lions. Mm -hmm. I can't see them passing. I can't see them winning yeah. enough to pass the Lions. So that that's going to be tough to get sure. a wild card. Yeah. Okay, let's crack and on with flow. the yeah, exactly. their, their their flow. You know, is already kind of damaged yeah. right now, and yeah. so it's, mm -hmm. it's more of a matter of seeing who's going to really step up and, and going to be around for the long term. Exactly. Let's have a look at uh, the Houston Texans at the Baltimore Ravens. Now, this has uh, very much wild card implications. Looking at the way the AFC is shaping up, uh, the Houston Texans are four and six, uh, just on the cusp of uh, playoff places, believe it or not, and uh, also. The Baltimore Ravens, they're actually just about in a wild card spot, I believe, at five and five. So um, where do we see this game going, James? Air Savage. <laughs> <laughs> he got his Unless first win. Play. See, he played Tom pretty well. Savage. They played pretty well, and they, they did a nice job of keep maneuvering their offense to try to help him mm. play well and, and not leave him back in the pocket. I mean, he's got cement feet. And that's a real problem. But Team with a lot of injuries as well. They got a touchdown on a rollout that he mm. and pass to Lamar Miller, where it's nicely designed play to get Lamar Miller into the end zone where mm. he can throw the ball to him. Mm. Their defense would be up, probably up to the level of Baltimore's, absent the injuries of JJ oh, Watt yeah. and, and, and Merciless. Whitney Merciless, yeah. you know, yeah. missing that. Their offensive line is is not that great. Mm -hmm. Lamar Miller is a good player, you know, really good running back. Savage is... That's why we let him go. You know who Savage is a lot like? <laughs> go on. And, and it might be because, you know, similar backgrounds and all, but Joe Flacco. You know, mm, the less mobile Joe Flacco. Yeah, I get that. Um, that not, the first, not the Joe Flacco yeah. who liked to run in his first couple of yeah. years, move around more. But, but he's not up to that thing. And Baltimore's offense 
is negligible, to be honest. You know, they, you know, it's Flacco. Think of Pittsburgh. Yeah. And yeah. it's Pittsburgh's offense, but without the playmakers. Yeah. I mean, you've got Jeremy Macklin in there who, who has a, yeah. he's had who's a bit of a shoulder in, injury who's yeah. starting to... Yeah. Yeah. He's but their that, best weapon, yeah. you know, uh, although they did manage to get Mike Wallace involved. And, and that nice was... Nice to see, isn't wa- it? You know, remember those games with Baltimore mm. when they were winning? <laughs> it was like twice a game, yeah. Joe Flacco hits a long pass, and three times a game he gets a mm. pass interference penalty. So that's yeah. five big plays a game. But this was a beautiful pass to Wallace. He made a great catch yeah. uh, for a touchdown. And Danny Woodhead's fit again as well, which is a big which, outlet. Which will help them yeah. a bit too. But that defense is out of sight. They're mm. playing really, really well. The offense obviously is still struggling. I mean, three takeaways last week. They converted into three points. It's, it's you know, they, they may be good at the defense, may be able to get well, them into the playoffs, but yeah. where do they go from I mean, there? three weeks in a row, they, they're, they're similar to they haven't given up a point three weeks in a row. No, true. Two but shutouts they, in the bye week. But who are they playing? You know, they're well, the bye week, they're playing nobody. They're playing Green Bay without an offense. Yeah. So it's uh, a little bit different yeah, but this, this week. But, but now they're playing Houston with, which with, is with a limited offense. offense. Exactly. I mean, it's, again, yeah. I, I can't see the Ravens losing this one at home. Creative blitzes they're getting away with. I think that's the big key with Well, that's because that, but they've got a lot of talent there, and 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 depth. you have to respect the way they I develop talent. I think it's depth more than talent. Yeah. I think it's depth. They've got a lot of players that they can bring you in. Know, and you out. Look at who they've lost in the last couple of years. Yeah. A lot of good talent, good defensive players, and they still bring guys along. They they draft mm. guys, they sign them undrafted, low round draft picks, mm. and they bring them up in the system. You know, they they see the na- they see the accoutrements that mm. they've got mm. and they say we can turn this guy into a player who can help us you know they've got to play obviously if they get past houston which is no gimme but it, that you'd expect yeah. them to win this um they've got to play detroit and then they've got to play pittsburgh but the last three games are winnable so i think yeah, you know, you, you they've got and they've got cincinnati at home yeah. i think if i'm not mistaken i think they're a wild card team yeah i, I, I agree i think, I think they're a good a bet for a wild, for a wild card, card team, team. yeah, yeah. Do you, you think the same, Cease? No, nah, man, you guys just broke it down. I just, you know, yeah, just right, hanging out. Right. You hang out. <laughs> you hang out. <laughs> right, cool. I think that'll do us for, the, for this, though. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure, as always. Thanks again, guys. Mike Carlson, Cecil Martin, Simon Millam. We'll hope to see you soon. Keep watching YouTube every week. Don't forget, we are the Sports Heads. Red Zone Sports. Bet, the British home of American sports.